Steve Squires is the proud father of the twin Mars exploration rovers that have been exploring the Red Planet for more than 1,200 days. The mission has lasted 13 times longer than expected, but Squires still isn't ready to let go. I used to have this kind of naive notion, very satisfying notion, that there would come a point in these missions where we could sit back, you know, fold our arms and sit back and feel satisfied and say, we've done it. You know, we have learned what we can learn about the surface of Mars at these places with these rovers. We've done our jobs. What has happened is that Mars, even three years into the mission, continues to throw new stuff at us, surprises. Okay? And what I've come to realize and, and, and just emotionally comes to, come to terms with is whether they die today or whether they die a year or three years from now, there's always going to be some tantalizing thing just beyond our reach that we didn't quite get to. It's, it's, it's just always going to be like that. And that's, I guess, the nature of exploration. And so we just live with it. There is one thing he already doesn't miss from the rover's initial months of operation living out his earthly days on Martian time. The Martian day is not 24 hours long. It's 24 hours and 39 minutes long. And during the first four months of the mission, when we were still learning our trade, when we were still getting proficient at operating these vehicles, we needed to operate on their schedule. The rovers are solar powered. They're awake in the daytime, they're asleep at night. And they don't know or care if it's daytime or nighttime in Los Angeles or Philadelphia or anywhere on Earth. They only know if it's daytime or nighttime where they are. And so we lived on a schedule that was locked to the Martian clock. 24 hours, 39 minutes as opposed to 24 hours. So if our daily planning meeting would start, say, at noon today, then tomorrow it would have to start at 12.39 and the next day at 1.18 and so forth. And two and a half weeks, li weeks later, it would be starting in the middle of the night. And so we were on a schedule that constantly rotated with respect to Earth time. We had Martian watches. We had Martian wall clocks. We had Martian alarm clocks to wake us up. Uh, we had blackout curtains on the windows so we couldn't tell if it was daytime or nighttime on Earth. Um, my entire team of 170 scientists were all living and operating on Mars time, except, of course, we had two rowers to operate. So I had to take my team and split it in half, and they're both operating on Mars time. But because the rovers are at two different longitudes, they're living and working in two different Martian time zones. And if you were working on Spirit and you wanted to switch to op Opportunity, you'd get Martian jet lag. It was a very, very strange existence. And besides, once the mission finally does end, his wardrobe choices will expand. I am a superstitious guy. I'm embarrassed to, to admit it. Um, I've been involved in many, many planetary missions. And uh, some have succeeded brilliantly. Others have failed miserably and everything in between. And um, I am a little superstitious. Um, virtually every mission for which I have ever purchased a t-shirt, you know, you get a t-shirt with the name of the mission on it, has failed horribly. Things have exploded, crashed. I mean, terrible things have happened. And so I never get t-shirts for missions anymore. Oh, there are lots of more t-shirts. I just won't touch them. I won't wear them. I mean, you'll never see me in a Mars Exploration Rover shirt until both rovers have died. For a news video on how and why the rovers survived so long, see Science Central's story, Mars Rover Survival.